All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar tutorial. Um, this week, James is going to be taking us through a game that he's been working on um, and will be showing us um, how he built it, especially using JavaScript. Um, I'm sure it'll be interesting and useful and um, nice to see how he went about it. Um, nice to have a student hosting. And if you have any ideas um, yourself of something that you've made um, and you'd like to present it, um, it'd be great uh, to hear that. So you can just drop me a, a message on Discord about that. Um, I don't have much more to say. Um, so I'm going to hand over to James and then he can start taking you through the code. All right. Thanks, Michael. Um... Hope everyone can hear me. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, during Easter, I thought it would be fun to make a game. Uh, most of the tutorials I found online were way too hard for me to follow. Uh, and then I found some code on this website, um, which basically teaches you how to at least make a little square that can jump between two platforms. Um, it's not perfect. Um, so I changed it a bit. It's probably still not perfect, but uh, yeah, I changed it a bit and added to it uh, to make this, which resembles a bit more of a level from an old game uh, and you can try again. And if you get to the end, if you get to the end, uh, it'll just say, well done here. So that's what we're gonna make today. Um, I'm gonna whiz through the HTML and CSS because the main bit's the JavaScript. Um, if you are coding along at home, just make sure you get this canvas element down, that's where all the game is going to be drawn um, and everything's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I'll just go through it quickly anyway. So game title here in the H1, um, just some information to display what level it's on uh, and some instructions to say that you're going to use the left, right, up keys to control, control the character and get to the final platform. Um, there's also this paragraph status that's where it's going to show game over or congratulations or whatever if you complete the level um, and there's also a button that says try again um, and you'll notice it's got two classes try again and hidden uh, so it's hidden at the minute um, we'll toggle that to show it when we need to uh, but like i say the main thing is this canvas which is where everything is going to happen uh, the CSS, I won't go through in so much detail because um, at the minute it was more of an afterthought. I haven't put so much thought into the aesthetics of this game. It's just the, the fonts and the font sizes here and, and the background colors. Um, the only functional bit, like I mentioned, is this hidden class where display is set to none to hide that try again button. Um, so that bit's a bit important, um, but the rest of it, I'm sure you can make something that looks a lot more beautiful. Uh, the other thing I've done is on the canvas element, just put this board around just to show you that it is there and where it is. Otherwise, you wouldn't know that that element is there until we start drawing on it. Um, so that's where it is for now. Okay, let's get stuck into the JavaScript. I'm going to move this over. Like I say, don't worry if you didn't get the CSS down. Uh, you can style it however you want later on. Um, and all of this, uh, the repo will be made public and uh, you can go in and get the final code whenever you want. I'll share a link. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, I get my notes on the other screen. First thing we need to do is select our canvas. So we need a constant canvas. And we'll need a query selector to get that. And then we're not actually going to work directly with this canvas constant that we found. We need to do one more, which is to set the context, CTX for short. Um, and that's canvas dot get context. And the context is 2D. And this isn't something I've made up. This is Part of the course for all uh, drawing 2D on canvas. And that then comes with a set of methods that we can use on this context constant. 
And those methods um, are what we will use to draw. So you can draw lines, rectangles, arcs, curves, uh, I think text as well. Um, to keep it simple today, we're literally just going to draw filled in rectangles. Everything we need to do for this game is, is just filled in rectangles. Um, cool. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is set the canvas size. And we do that with ctx.canvas. Height. And set that to 300. And the canvas width. Um, so I've just pretty much plucked these numbers out of out of thin air just to make something that's large enough to have a basic level. Um, a lot of times it should be mentioned that you can use this canvas element. It's not just for games, it's for any kind of drawing, graphics, animations, infographics. Um, quite often you'll want it to be the size of a full screen or you can set it however you want. Um, and what we're gonna do next is draw the background. Uh, the background is just solid white. So we're just gonna draw a rectangle that fills up the entire canvas. Uh, one thing to note before we start drawing is that we'll need to always give an X and Y coordinate to show where to draw on the canvas. Um, and when we're drawing X, Y, zero, zero is in this top left corner. So you're probably used to drawing graphs at school where the origin is in the bottom left corner, but the Y axis is always inverted drawing on this canvas. So uh, zero, zero is up here. And then the X axis increases as per usual. And the Y axis increases down the page, uh, just to bear in mind. Uh, when we're drawing things. Okay, so we'll make a function to, to draw that background. Uh, function. We'll call it render background. First up, we'll give it a color. We'll do that with ctx.fill style. And we can just go with white, we'll keep everything simple. And then we need to tell it to draw a rectangle. So that's one of those methods that I mentioned earlier, and it's called fill rect. And we need to pass in four arguments. We need the start point, so we need the start x coordinate and the start y coordinate. So we'll start at zero, zero. And then because we want to fill the whole canvas, uh, our width is the next argument to pass in. So we will pass in the canvas width, which we specified earlier. And we will pass in the canvas height. And then if we call that function, and paste to avoid any typos. Hopefully the background will go white. Yes, so all we've done there is draw a big rectangle that fills the background. Um, and the reason we've done it as a function is because we're not going to leave it here later on. We're going to move it within a game loop and we're going to loop through 50 times every second and draw everything. Um, so yeah, we'll have a frame rate of uh, 50 frames per second. But I'll leave it there for now. We'll move it into our game loop later when we make it. Uh, okay, so the next thing to draw is our platforms. And we've got five of these to draw, so I'll put them in a list and an array. So we'll let platforms. Equal. And again, like when we drew this rectangle for all the platforms, we're going to need a start coordinate x and y. Uh, and a width and a height. So there'll be four properties within each of these platform objects. And we'll start drawing the first one at 100 and 200. So that'll come 100 in, 200 down, down here somewhere. And we need a width. Of 110 and a height of 15. And then 
I'll copy and paste that because we need four more and we're going to keep the widths and the heights the same. So we'll just change the X and Y coordinates for the other four. Two, three, four. four. So there's our first one. The second one, we'll just increase the X coordinate to move it over a bit. And one after that, we'll go a bit further over again. And we'll decrease the Y coordinate which will move it upwards. So that's this third one here. The fourth one is a bit further over again. So increase the X. And the Y was the same as the previous one, 150. And then the final platform is even further over. That one is at 930. And it's a bit higher up as well, it's at 100. Okay, so next we will make a function to draw those platforms. So this one we'll call render platforms. And we're gonna to need to loop through the platforms we've got. So we'll use a for loop. We want to go up to the length of the platforms list. And increase by one each time. And then within that we do like we did for drawing the, the rectangle for the background. We set a color, ctx.fill style. Again, we'll keep it simple, just go with blue. And each of those platforms needs to be drawn as a filled in rectangle. So first the X coordinate, which as we loop through will be platforms I dot X property. And then the same for the Y property. Just copy and paste that. And then the same for the width. And the same for the height. Okay, and hopefully when we call this function the platforms will draw. Unless I've made some kind of typo. Let's have a look. There they are, good. Um, cool, we'll do the code to make this fourth platform move a little bit later. That will also have to be within the game loop. So next we're going to draw the player. And like the platforms, we'll need to create an object to give our player various properties. So the player will also need an X coordinate so we know where to draw it and a Y coordinate. So we'll start it off at 120 and 200 on the first platform. Uh, the player will need a height and a width. Let's do width first. And it's just a 20 by 20 square. Uh, there's a couple more properties here as well. Um, need to know how our player is moving. So we've got the X velocity and it's not moving at the beginning. So set that to zero. The Y velocity, also zero at the beginning. And we need to know whether the player is jumping and that's a Boolean and starts off at false. Okay, so that's the player's properties. And I think you probably guessed what's coming next. We need a function to draw the player. Um, which one will I copy? Let's copy this one. So now 
we've got a new function render player. Player will be red and the starting coordinate will be player dot x. Player dot y. Copy and paste these. Player dot width. And player dot height. And let's call that function as well. Just like the first function, these drawing functions will all need to be moved within our game loop later. Okay, so there's the player. Um, and at the minute it's too low down. And that's because even though we've set the Y value of the player, the same as the Y value of the first platform. Remember we start drawing in the top left corner and then we draw the width and the height. So these top, top sides are the same height. So the simple way to adjust for that is just when we're drawing the player. Or we can take off 20 pixels and that will do it. Um, but to be a bit more proper, we'll do minus uh, player.height just in case the player's height changes at any point during the game. Um, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna adjust the X coordinate as well. Uh, I don't know if you remember on this one, I don't think they've done it here and it means that you can you can fall through the platforms or you can go right to the edge on one side but you kind of fall through on the other side um, and we'll do our checks to see whether we're on the platform later but i find it easier to check when i can think of the center of the player as being or the player's x coordinate as being here in the center of the player so i'm just going to adjust that by half the uh, player's width uh, I'll just leave that at 10 rather than doing player width over two, but that would be a bit more proper. Okay, so that's everything drawn. Um, next, we need to figure out how to control the player. So we're going to be using the left, right, and up keys. So I'll make an object called keys. And to start off with, right would be false, left would be false, and up will also be false. And obviously when we press these keys, these will become true and stuff will happen. Um, while we're at it, I'm just gonna also create this gravity variable set that to 0 0.6 that will be applied later on to our y velocity when we're not on a platform or when we're jumping um, and we need functions to say what to do uh, when those keys are pressed the right left and up keys so we need a key down function so we'll create this one called key down and it will take in one argument E, I don't know why it's E, I just left that unchanged, but that's the that's the key being pressed. So if E dot key code is equal to 37, then keys dot left will become equal to true. So 37, yeah, it's key code for the left arrow key. And if we push that, we want this left property to become true. Um, same for the right key. Let's copy this. Except the key code for the right arrow key is 39. And then we need to also do the up key and that's a little bit different. Key code there is 38. Um, but we don't want to immediately make the player jump because if they're already in the middle of a jump in midair, we don't want the player to be able to 
hit that same key again and just keep jumping because you'd be able to just jump through the air and effectively fly across the level. So first we check whether the player is jumping. So we do if player.jump is false. I could have just written if not player.jump, but uh, yeah, if player.jump is false, then we want to make the player jump. And we do that by setting the y velocity to minus 10. So remember negative uh, y values will take you upwards. Um, and then player.jump is equal to true. So that's our key down function. Uh, and next we'll do key up. So what happens when we release the key? Let's copy this one. It's probably a bit quicker. Set this one's key up. And when we release the key, then it becomes false again. Release the right key and that becomes false. Jump is a bit different again. We don't want jump to immediately become false because if we're in midair and we release the up key and jump becomes false, then we just freeze in midair. Uh, jump being equal to true is what's going to make gravity be applied later. Uh, and so if we immediately set it to false, gravity would cease to be applied um, and the player would just freeze in midair. So this one is a bit different. Um, Basically, we just check to see whether the player is moving up through the air quickly. So if player dot IV is less than minus two. So when we jump, we set it to minus 10. Um, so that would be the starting upwards velocity of the player when we jump. Gravity will kick in and that will slow right down. But if we release this uh, key, if we do the key up quickly, and then what we're going to do is cut the speed of the jump down uh, and that will have the effect of allowing us to just do small jumps. So if we tap and release, then we'll cut the speed down to minus one, whereas it started at minus 10. Um, if that's all as clear as mud, then just mess around with these numbers uh, yourselves, uh, change these around. If you set that to zero, then player just starts falling as soon as you release the up key, it doesn't look quite as realistic. Uh, so minus one uh, just cuts the jump short and allows you to do small jumps. Okay, so now we need to listen for those key pushes um, or key releases. So we do that with an event listener, document dot add event listener. And what we're listening for is key down. And then we want to run our function key down. And if we do the same for key up, that will listen out for the various key presses. Um, and none of this works yet. I try going left and right, nothing will happen uh, because we're not telling the, the player's X and Y coordinates to update. Um, and we need to do that within our game loop. So we'll build our loop now. And we're going to need a function for that. We'll do a function called loop. And then what we'll do after is we'll call this function 50 times every second. So within this loop, we're checking for checking for various things. So first we'll say if player.jump is equal to true. So we're going to say that is if player.jump, then we want gravity to be applied. So the player's y velocity property will have gravity added to it. 
plus equals. So every time through the loop, another 0.6 will get added. And let's move that down. And then we want to move left and right. So if keys dot left, then we want the players x velocity to be minus 2.5. 2.5 is just going to be the speed of our player each frame through. We can move 2.5 when we're, when we're holding right or left. Uh, you could have created a variable called player speed or something and, and put that in. Um, but we'll just leave it at this for now. Uh, so if it's left and the player's left uh, or x velocity will be minus 2.5. Else if keys dot right is true. Then we want the x velocity to be positive 2.5. else we just want it to be zero. Okay, and then we need to update our players x and y coordinates with what's happening here. So we do player dot y plus equals player's y velocity. And we do the same for the x velocity. And then within our game loop, we need to redraw everything based on these new, new coordinates. So I will just grab those drawing functions. We've got the background. goes in at the end of our loop and the platforms cut that from there oh great skip the whole thing and the player semicolons in. Um, and then we want to call that 50 times a second. So we use a set interval to do that. And we're going to call our loop function every 20 milliseconds. And then we'll call that Okay, so we should have some functionality now. We can move left and right, but we haven't yet got any checks in place to see whether we're on a platform or not. Uh, but we can move and we should be able to jump. Yeah, but we just fall straight off, like I say, because we've got no checks to see if we're on the platform, but at least gravity was being applied correctly. So let's add those other bits now. Um, just find my notes. First thing we'll do is make this uh, fourth platform move. And we'll do that here before we update the player's X and Y coordinates. And the reason for that is that if the player is on the platform, we want their X velocity to change so that they move with the platform. Uh, Otherwise, you'd land on the platform and it would move out from beneath your feet unless you kept moving right or left with the moving platform. So we put that in here. And well, first thing we need to do is set the speed of the moving platform. So I created a variable called slide. That 
slide equals two. We put that outside our loop. And then inside the loop, before we update the coordinates, we will adjust that fourth platform. So we need platforms three. We want to update their X coordinate by that value slide. So every time we loop through now, two is going to get added. I'm sure you've guessed what's going to happen. It'll just keep going forever. So we need an if statement to catch it. And we say if platforms three dot x is greater than or equal to eight hundred then we'll reverse the direction of the slide. So slide equals minus slide. And this should change the direction. Great. And then it'll just keep going forever in that direction. So we need an or. And we'll say if the player's x coordinate is less than or equal to, what did I do, 520. And again, this line doesn't need changing, that just changes the direction. So now the platform will move backwards and forwards, but we still haven't done any check to see whether the player is on it. And if the player is on it, then we need to adjust the player's x velocity to move with the platform. Um, this is a bit of a long line, so I'm going to copy and paste it in, but I'll go through it very slowly. I just don't want to get stuck counting brackets or anything like that. So this is our check to see whether we're on that moving platform. And it's similar to the checks we'll do to see whether we're on the other platforms. Basically, what we want to do is compare our player's x coordinate with the platform's x coordinate, which will be the left hand side. And then we want to compare it with the right hand side, which is the platform's x coordinate plus the platform's width. And that will tell us whether we're between one side and the other of the platform. And then for this moving platform, we basically just want to check if we're on it. So we'll check whether the Y coordinates are equal to each other for the player and the platform. So here we've got if the platform's X coordinate is less than or equal to the player's X coordinate. And this little player dot width over two minus one, that just means that you can move right to the edge of the platform before you fall off. It's just a little adjustment to do that. So that's that first part is uh, checking the left hand side. And then we need the and, double ampersand, to check the right hand side, which is this highlighted part. So again, the player's x coordinate with a little adjustment should be less than the platform's right hand side, which is the x coordinate plus the platform's width. Um, and then lastly, also need to check with another and that the player's y coordinate is exactly equal to the platform's y coordinate. And then we know that we're on this third platform. And if that's the case, then we update the player's x velocity with whatever slide is. So whether that's plus or minus two, depending on which way the, the platform is moving, the player's x will get updated or added to before the actual player gets redrawn. So that's why this needs to be in here as well before the, uh, before the additional updates are added. Okay, maybe that was as clear as mud, but uh, you can play around with these numbers at home and see what happens. Um, we still can't quite test that out yet because we need to do our check to see whether we're on any platform in order to stop us from falling because we can still do this at the minute. Um, and we won't actually land on that platform until we do our check. And we need to do that a bit lower down. And it's another long line of code like this one, but it follows a similar principle. We check that after the player's X and Y coordinates are done, are updated, because we need to know where we are at the end, whether we're landing on a platform or not at the, uh, towards the end of the loop. Uh, this is another really long one, so I'm going to copy and paste it, but I'll go through it quite slowly. And we'll plunk it in under here. It starts with this for loop, 
So we need to loop through the platforms that we've got uh, to check whether we're on one of them. And again, you've got that similar if statement. So you've got if the platform's x coordinate is to the left of the player's x coordinate, then you know the player's on the right hand side of that platform. If the player's x coordinate is less than the platform's x plus the platform's width, then you know whether you're on the left hand side of this right hand side of the platform. So you know whether you're between these two points. And then the y was a bit different and this took me a while to get my head around. Um, but basically we're checking to see whether we're inside the platform when it comes to checking the y coordinates. Because chances are we're gonna be falling from a jump um, and in order to stop us from falling through the platform, we check whether we're inside it at some point, and then we quickly catch the player, so to speak, and put the player back on top of the platform. Um, the reason we don't do this check to see if it's exactly equal to is because you'll be falling at 5 or 10 or 15 pixels every frame, and the ch chances of you being exactly equal to the top of the platform are tiny. So this code will stop you falling through the platform or at least this if statement will check whether you're falling through the platform and if you are you want to stop that so if that's met if those conditions are met then we set your y position the player's y position to be the same as the platform's y position and this puts you exactly on top we set jump to false which stops the player from falling we set the y velocity to zero um, I can't exactly remember why this was needed. I think it was to fix a bug, but it's good just to stop you from falling as well. And then we break, and that break part's important because you can only be on one platform at a time. So if you are on the first platform and all of these conditions are met and it stops you jumping, then the next platform in the loop, you won't be on that one and you'll start falling again because that's the next part, else player.jump equals true. So if you're not on any of the platforms, then jump is set to true, and that means you fall. So let's just see if that works. Yes. Good. So that's our check to see whether we're on the platforms. Um, and that should mean that we can jump through, jump from platform to platform as well. What we'll do next is color that last platform differently, and that will be our goal. And then we'll put in some checks to see whether we're on that final platform or whether we've fallen off the screen, and then that will tell us whether it's game over or well done. Okay, so let's select that final platform. If we go up to our platforms list, we can do it up there. So after that list, we'll create a final platform. Um, and that will be set equal to platforms and we want the last platform in the array so platforms dot length minus one and then when we're drawing the platforms we can draw them all blue but then after the loop we'll draw that last one a different color I think I went with pink And we need this line, except now we need to call that method on final platform. I think my error is caused by that needing a semicolon. Yep. Okay, so there's our final platform. That's our goal. Probably have called it goal instead. Would have been a bit shorter. Um, and then back down to our game loop. Here we need to do some if statements to check whether we've reached that final platform. And because then we're going to make a couple of things happen here, we need to select that uh, paragraph with the class of status, and we need to select the button with a class of try again. So I'll just do that first outside of this game loop. And where have I got them in my notes? So 
status. Is that status paragraph? And we want to do the same for the try again button. So we'll create this try again. And then we can manipulate those. So within our game loop before we redraw everything. I'll just show you while I'm here as well. Uh, you might be thinking, why do we need to redraw the background as it's the same every time, but I'll just show you what happens if we move that outside the game loop. I think you can see it happening there already. Basically, you don't get that refresh that you need. Oh wow, what a fluke, landed on the platform, but yeah. So that's why you need to redraw everything, every frame. I think there is also a clear canvas function, which might also be useful for that, but uh, I just will redraw the background first to wipe everything white. Okay, uh, so let's put in those checks to see whether we've succeeded or failed. Um, what should we do first? Let's do, let's do failure first, should we? Um, so the only way to fail at the minute is to fall off, fall off the canvas. So if the player's Y position is greater than the height of the canvas, then we know we've fallen off. So player dot Y is greater than the canvas height. And I added the player height onto that so that the player will actually, it will check until the player is completely disappeared rather than just at the bottom of the screen. So if that happens, then status will be set to game over. Right then. We want to see our try again button. So we need to remove that hidden class on that try again button. So try again class list dot toggle and toggle that hidden class. And we stop the game running. So clear interval. Game loop. Okay, so that will check whether we've fallen off the screen. Um, our try again button doesn't yet do anything, but let's just see if this works. Off we go, game over and try again, great. Uh, so let's just tell that try again button to restart the game. And it would probably be good at some point to make an actual function called restart, but for now we will just do it here. So we'll add an event listener on the try again to see whether anyone clicks on the try again button. So we'll listen out for a click and then we'll run this function. And that function is going to reset everything. So we'll get rid of that game over status. Just leave it as an empty string. Uh, and we'll hide that try again button. Hang on, I can just copy that a little quicker. Because we're toggling it. If it's there already, it'll get rid of it. And if it's not there, it'll add it. And then we reset our player's x and y coordinates. And what I did on this one was just set the y coordinate a little bit lower 
than what it's like at the beginning of the game when you first play. And that's going to drop the player in midair, and we want the player to fall down onto the platform. So we start their y velocity at zero, but we set jump equal to true. It should be player dot jump. It doesn't seem to make a difference. Anyway, that one's true. So the player should fall down onto the platform. And the last thing we need to do, because we've cleared the interval and stopped the game running, is to get the game running again with the set interval. Or this bit of code can be tidied up a bit, but let's just see if it works. So we fall, we try again, and we drop back down. And all of this hopefully works. Now we just need to add our victory condition when we make it to this final platform. So back inside the loop, after we did this check to see whether we'd fallen off, we'll do a check to see whether we've made it to the final platform. And that's going to be another one of those super fun, long-winded if statements. So if, open another bracket, final platform, I'll try typing this one and see if I don't make any mistakes, otherwise I'll just copy and paste it in. Final platform's x coordinate is less than the players. With that little adjustment. Flip over to minus one. And we want to check the other side. Player dot width again over two. Minus one, that minus one just means we can be one pixel on the platform before we fall. Um, and that bit has to be less than the right hand side of the final platform. So we do final platform dot x plus final platform dot width to get the right hand side and we need to check the y coordinate but again because that other bit of code will have kicked in and placed us on top of the platform we just need to check whether the y coordinates are the same player dot y equal to final platform dot y so if those conditions are met, then we're on the final platform. And then, well done. And we'll clear the interval as well. Stop the game running. Um, did that all work? I suppose I have to actually get to the end of the level to find out. Where is it? Hooray. Okay. Um, that's everything there is. Um, next steps would be to probably create a bigger level and figure out how to make the window follow the player as you go through a bigger level, add more platforms, more difficulties, um, more levels, 
but all of that shouldn't be too tricky. Um, and what you've got here is the kind of bare bones framework to build on. Uh, so I hope that was interesting. Uh, it's not complete with a, completely without its bugs still. Um, one thing which doesn't happen on this level but could happen is that if you're falling faster than 15 pixels each frame, you could fall straight through a platform because you'd go from being just above it to just below it without your Y coordinates ever actually matching the platform. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. If we drop the player at minus 250 when we restart the game. Might as well try again, but there we are. And you're falling fast, you just fall straight through the platform. So probably have to put a limit on this player Y velocity to limit it to 15 or whatever your platform width is. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it for now. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope it was useful. Um, I'll hand back over to Michael. Wow, thanks so much, James. That was great. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that. And I think it was a, it's a fairly technical uh, thing to handle Canvas. And I think you took us through it really, really well. So thank you very much. Um, Glenn had a question there about if the okay. player sits on the sliding platform. Maybe we could just test that. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Oh, uh, Glenn had a question. If the player sits on the sliding platform, when it goes back again, will the player fall off? Uh, no, um, that should be fine because we're setting, we're adding the changes. Um, I if I can get to that. Um, so we're updating the uh, player's x velocity with this slide variable. And slide will go from 2 to minus 2, depending on which way the platform is moving. So the player will uh, ride backwards and forwards on that platform. Uh, I can show that if I set that back to 150. So should be fine there. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, actually? I'm looking in the chat. Uh, oh, thanks, guys. I've only just looked at the chat, so uh, thank you. Any other questions? Um, there was one about uh, from Sean about, uh, it says, thanks James, awesome job. I'm curious, is the large gravity value used for game? Play reasons. Oh yeah. Um, um, it really was just a question of trial and error. Um, we can see what happens when we fiddle around with it. Um, any lower and you kind of, you hover in the air a bit long and kind of drift drift around. Uh, where have I got my gravity constant? Um, yeah, if we take it right down to 0 0.2, then obviously we'll just float around in midair, but uh, you can adjust that to however you want it really. You can jump as, as high or low as you want, but that's what 0 0.2 will do. And depends where you've set your platforms and everything else, uh, how high you wanna be able to jump, uh, what you think looks realistic. Part of the reason why I left it as a variable and not set it as a constant was that I thought it would be fun if you got some kind of power ups that would alter gravity and allow you to jump higher or lower. But um, yeah, uh, set that however you want if you if you uh, do this at home. Awesome. Oh, that's really great. Um, I don't. Uh, have any questions from my side uh, but just thank you very much for taking the time and preparing that it was very interesting to see you're very welcome thanks for listening <laughs>